guys, what's going on? I'm back. Um, another little project on the go. Um, first, I'm going to tell you a bit of a story. Um, this Poulain saw I picked up one night, dropping my friend off after work. Um, somebody had put it out on the side of the road for Big Garbage Day. And, uh, you know, obviously I saw it sitting there. Sun was going down. This real sexy green saw sitting out on the side of the road all by itself. There's a bunch of other garbage around it, but, you know, it was looking pretty good. So anyways, it did have a bar on it, it had a chain on it, it was sitting there. Um, obviously it wasn't in this kind of condition, um, if you could see. I mean, it's really clean. Super clean. So anyways, I thought, maybe one day I'll use this thing, maybe one day I won't. Um, it's been about... 10 years, I want to say, give or take, um, sitting on the floor. Um, I actually had fake blood put all over it and uh, wanted to use it as a Halloween prop, chasing people around with it. And uh, my wife pretty much shot that idea down real quick. So here we are. So the Tin Man, if anybody knows who that is, please, Tin Man Saws on YouTube, check that guy out. Um, pretty amazing stuff over there. Super smart guy. Um, real good videos. Um, anyways, so I had this kicking around, had some time, started watching some of the Tin Man's videos, and, uh, you know, decided, hey, let's do something with the old Poo Lan, uh, 2150 saw. 2150. Um, I think it's, uh, well... That's kind of the gist of what's going on here. Anyways. So, got on to the interweb and uh, found out you can get really cheap parts for these. I mean, they're super cheap saws, begin with, whatever. Um, and I get it. Some people might watch this video and say, you know, why are you doing this with the Poulin? Um, especially these ones. I mean, they're just plastic. They're They're... You know, if you've ever had a, like a Ryobi garbagey weed eater, um, something like that, it's, it's about the same. So, anyways, sorry guys, but dry mouth going on. Um, so anyways, I thought, why not? Parts were super cheap, got nothing going on. Let's make a little video here on rebuilding this little poo land. So... I ordered the engine for it, um, basic rebuild kit, just to get it ready to rock, and then find out. Put the bar and chain on it after I got it all cleaned up. And I already know it didn't run, because you can see we have everything here on the bench. I mean, you got the crank, the piston, fuel filter, whatever clutch, everything else is off it. And I started looking it over really close, and you can see it's been super hot. Apologies for the light there, but yeah, it's been super hot, which led to everything being kind of bent or warped on the front of it. It's kind of hard to see down by the handle straight across, kind of uh, in this area going all the way to the back. It's not straight. So the whole side of it, you can see against the muffler there. Um, when you do put a bar on it, um, it just tightens up. It's on a crazy angle. Um, I mean, I don't. the chassis is no good. Um, you know, I took it apart, looking at it closer. Um, the bar bolts that come through actually uh, ended up pulling through pretty much most of the way. And uh, I actually didn't think it was all that bad until I got this bad boy in the mail. So I found this on eBay, uh, it was super cheap. A couple differences here. Um, might be hard to get into the camera. And yeah, we'll see. Anyway, it's hard to get in there. Let that focus. 
But compared to the other one, this one's mint. And you'll see later on when we take it apart, the studs right there are in good shape. There's no cracked plastic. I mean, overall, it's pretty good. There's a little bit of wear in here and here. You can see, looks like the chain's bit into this a couple of times. But I mean, overall, it's in really nice shape. So we're gonna take um, the other side completely apart, put it back in this chassis, and uh, hopefully get a little running saw that we can use for limbing. Um, so that is the plan of action. So I don't know if this is going to be a one or two part video. Um, really depends on how much babbling goes on here and how much uh, I feel like getting into her. Um, so we'll see how it goes anyways. So for this one, I just wanted to point out, um, everybody's talking about, um, you know, um, air leaks on these saws. Um, and specifically the seals um, on the crank here. So the engine is in two pieces. It's in the saw, you'll see when we take it out. You can see the indentation in the actual crank seals from when you tighten the case halves down. So it's a clamshell, one half, uh, you have the upper, and then the bottom is um, just a little cup that sits on the bottom, basically. And this crazy little connecting rod, that thing's awesome. And then a needle bearing for the race pin. So yeah, this is the new clutch drum. Like I said, I've already had this apart. I've been waiting for a while to get this video out. This stuff's been kind of sitting around and it's just now time to do it. So that's the old clutch that came in with the saw. This one I bought. And some people will notice right now that is a seven tooth. So I ordered a six. I ordered what was supposed to be a stock replacement. See this one here is a seven. Just put them side by side here. Right? So, and also the replacement here. This one didn't come with the bearing. So it basically comes blank board like that. And uh, I, ju I just warmed this up with the heat gun, pressed it, the uh, bearing out with a socket. And then same difference again with this one. I just warmed up the new one with the, with the uh, heat drum, sorry. And then uh, just press it in with the vise. The vise in a socket, worked pretty good. Slid right in, so, I mean, old, new. You can see why I wanted to replace this one. It's got absolutely ridiculous wear going on here. So, I mean, this all was well used by the look of it, or just not maintained very well. I don't know. Either way, they're not supposed to last for very long. They're disposable saws. So, we have that. I'm just set this one over there for now. And, um, like I said, this was all cleaned up already. Um, previous. It was, it was pretty filthy. The way it was. Let someone fly in there, but it didn't. Right? So this is how we're looking. Crankshaft. It's ready to fly in here. I'm gonna give you a close up. Like that one's pretty radical.
So they kind of sit in their halves. Anyways, so apparently that's a leak spot. Um, air gets in there, weans them out, and they don't run very well. All right, so hopefully we have new ones in our kit. Um, I wanna show you the inside of the cylinder. It's inside the saw right now, but this is the piston that came out of this bad boy. You can see it's really wrecked, really wrecked. And the, the ring here, Is, is a pretty crazy shape like you can kind of see it there but there's small ridges all over it it's it's incredible the inside of the cylinder looks uh, about the same it's not great not gonna lie not great there's not one spot on this piston that is any good the inside of it Yeah, just completely. And uh, this saw did not have any um, fuel filters in it at all. There wasn't one on the primer. There wasn't one on the uh, inlet for the carb. So, I mean, just could have got the Shiza in. Um, also could have been the air filter, but one way or another. Or again, Eric could have just got past the seal. She uh, went nuclear and that was it. Either way, it doesn't work. Um, compression tested this, ended up being um, 60 PSI, believe it or not. So I don't know if the grooves just magically align themselves. Um, maybe somebody went to your local auto parts store and uh, got some of that miracle shiza that you pour in and it just fills in all this stuff and makes it nice again. Anyways, we didn't we didn't get that stuff, but we did get in that box. That box should be um, not only the replacement engine for this, um, but also. And you know what? We're just gonna get the mic out right now. Let's just do get the mic out. That was not the mic. I would, uh, I would not be happy if that was the mic. So, zero this bad boy out. Let's see what we get on here. So, kind of 37.85. Um, like I said, it, it is completely worn out everywhere, so we can try to get something better here. It wasn't reflecting so bad. So that's kind of where we're getting. Um, so it's pretty consistently close to 36 up here. Maybe a bang on it. It, it was or 37.8. I mean, so there we are. Anyways, so the one that was supposed to be shipped was a 41 millimeter. So we'll see if there's much of a difference. I'm kind of wondering also if it's a single ring or dual ring. But, uh, yeah. We'll cut that one open. See what we went up with here. And uh, I just opened it quick. Um, like I said, I've had it for a while. I just opened it up pretty quick. Um, took the box to look inside to make sure it was what it the outline of it was supposed to be. I haven't actually taken it out of the wrap yet, so as you can see here, I haven't taken it out of the wrap yet. Don't know what's in there. So what we have here, we're going to set them aside. Um, we have our shim, 
the original clutch and set it over here with some of that fun stuff. Um, worn out oil pump. I didn't tell you the truth, I don't even know if it was worn out. It was just full of bunk. So, uh, didn't bother. Replace it. Why not? Cheap stuff. Cheap, cheap stuff. Um, this was in the tank. It wasn't connected to anything. This is the fuel filter in the tank, doing nothing. Um, this is the worm gear, the oil pump. I didn't get any one of these, so we'll see if this bad boy will work. Can't see why not. Throttle linkage from the trigger to the carb. We're gonna keep that stuff. Crank, we're gonna keep that. Here's just some old gaskets. And of course, the paperweight. Well, once I get famous, I'll use this on my sweet desk. You can sit across from it, it'll stare you down. Stare you down, the meltdown. Anyway. Okay. Let's clean this off just a tad. So what do we want to do here? Do we want to tear this down? Or do we want to see what we have inside the bubble wrap first? I say let's see what we have in the bubble wrap. Let's do that first. That's always crazy fun. I like new things. Reminds me of a time when... Being something you feel before you buy it. Mike! Exciting. Well, I hope you guys like that one. So, oh, look at this. In this box. So here's the gaskets for the carb, the exhaust. We have uh, some sweet merch. Can't even comment about what that's supposed to be all about. It's a sticker, final sticker, anyways. And then we have supposedly the 41 millimeter piston and cylinder kit. Supposedly, there's bearings and everything in here. So, let's try to get this open. New crank seals, bearing seals. This looks like it's going to be a spark plug. I'll have to take the bubble wrap off that in a second. It's better than Christmas, boys. Better than Christmas. Um, some new... Crank bangs. 6201s. And it says CCEB, so whatever. 6201, 6201. That's the size of the crank Oh, it looks mighty fine in here. Very mighty fine. I'm kind of excited about this now. You gotta cut this stuff up into small pieces or uh, it kills um, kill stuff, you know? Don't know what, but it might choke on it. If anything can choke on things, it's definitely gonna get this and it's gonna choke on it. Maybe even twice. So we're gonna throw it on the floor behind us. Hopefully nobody chokes on it. If you don't ever see me make another video, I've choked on it. I have literally stuck it in my mouth and choked on it. And then looking back at that, there will probably be a comment made. So, anyhow, 
inside here, stuffed deep inside, way in the back. And I mean, that's some nice, uh, it's a nice cast. It's not bad, I'm not gonna lie, that's uh, not bad. So this is an Amazonian special. Um, add a foil, eat a foil. Um, store. Came from China. Um, took a long time, took a long time. Um, wasn't like your standard, okay, I pay my Prime membership. Well, and then I don't even know what's going on with that anymore because you pay your Prime membership and then it's four to five days mail, uh, just pretty much like everybody else. So if you're gonna reevaluate something, maybe wonder about what's going on with that. So anyways, anyways, came from China. Um, took a few weeks to get here, but I got here and then I was in a hurry and then it sat in a box for a month while I built a trailer um, for my side by side. Anyways, piston rings, two of them. Great deal here, boys. Great deal here. Great deal here. I'm hoping that this is going to take this from like a 36cc to a 40 to 47cc saw. I'm hoping. I'm going to have to measure it out. Let's see what she does. And this one, we definitely have. Again. I'm not here. I ate that. Brandy Berry. It's excellent. Excellent, excellent. So that will be um, your wrist pin bearing on the end of your connecting rod. Nice little unit there. Again, um, no distinguishable marks. Uh, it doesn't have any great name brand stamped into it. So it's a Sea Heine. Let's slid right on out of there. We can kind of see what's going on in here with that. Sorry guys, the light is kind of strange. But yeah, very nice. Very nice unit. Nice casting. Everything is nice. Um, it's got this like very sweet uh, gunmetal look to it. Uh, you know, anything in gunmetal could have been done better if they would have wrapped it in carbon fiber and then made it gunmetal. But anyways, you'll never see it. It's going to be under a cover, but it's nice. I don't mind it. It's nice. I hope it works well. And then of course, the piss down. And she's a beauty. I mean, for what you get, guys, pay attention. This whole set, I think, maybe cost me 40 bucks. So we're into this for the free saw and $40 for most of the engine. Write that down. So anyways, um, if you notice, this is a new one. Dual ring, old one, single ring, new one, muchos bigger. Hard to see. We are a lot bigger here. So perfect. We're actually taking this up from 36 cc into the 40s. Um, gonna have to do some numbers. Actually, see what the, the uh, numbers are on this one, but that's gonna be cool. Very cool. Very cool. I'm excited about this. So hopefully that top end fits in the case. Um, I think this video is getting pretty long. So we might have to cut this part here and then uh, pick it up. In part two. It's nice. And also our wrist pin. Very nice, very nice. the wrist pin clips. Which are the nice ones too. They have that little uh, tab on them so that you can grab onto them with pliers like you're a normal person and get them out of there. Um, nothing like the ones where you get yourself a sweet, sharp little pick and you stick them in there and they're like literally the C-clip style and you stick them in and then they spring out of there and hit you in the face at 4,000 miles an hour or fly into the grass or fly into the corner or wherever they fly to. You never see them again. Plus you stab yourself real good with that 
F vomit and pick. You're always bleeding. Those things are a nightmare. You gouge your stuff up. I don't know. I don't know. Just not in love with those whatsoever. Um, okay. So I'm going to wrap this one up. And then uh, part two is definitely going to be um, ripping into the saw. So we're going to take that apart. We are going to switch all of the good parts off of this one, whatever's left. Um, I'm really hoping that the chain break side is okay and not messed up too much, but we're, we're, we're going to see into that one anyways. If not, we have a plan. We have a plan for that. Um, so yeah, also new carb kit. Cheapy, cheapy. Carburetor carb P2150 made in China. Perfect. So, I mean, it'll all fail within the first three or four minutes together. There won't be anything left to salvage. Whatever that is. Okay. Anyways, part two.